What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Moon616 here. And yeah, it is uh, that time again for another Top 10 Tuesdays. Uh, yeah, episode number 8 this week is uh, Top 10 Vampire Films of All Time. Um, yeah, vampires. Alrighty, so let's get right into the Top 10 here. Uh, number 10 here, we got uh, Vamp um, from 1987, I believe. Um starring Grace Jones. This has always been a, a favorite of mine, man. I, I grew up on this one, so I watch it over and over again, but it is more of like a comedy, but um, really interesting flick, though. I love Grace Jones in it. She's uh, she's pretty cool, man. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a kind of a different one, but I've always enjoyed this one. It's great. Great 80s cheese. Number 10. Uh, sticking with the 80s here, uh, we got Near Dark from... I don't know, 87 again or something. Uh, yeah, starring, of course, uh, you know, Bill Paxton and Lance Henderson. Um, this one I've always been such a huge fan of. This is such a great flick. Um, Lance Henderson's just fantastic in it. Same with uh, um, Bill Pullman's, fuck, or Bill Paxton, Bill Pullman. Bill Paxton's fucking fantastic in it also. So um, I love the premise of this film, though. It's fantastic. But yeah, another one from 87. Yeah, Near Dark, number nine. Number eight is the uh, the Werner Herzog uh, version of Nosferatu, uh, of course, starring Klaus Kinski. Um, I love this flick, man. This is such a great flick. I think Klaus Kinski's performance as Nosferatu is just it's ridiculous, man. He's so fucking creepy and good in this. Um, you know, I, I just, there's something about this one, man. It just, it looks fantastic. Cinematography is just amazing. Uh, great telling of the, of the, you know, the vamp, or the Dracula story, but I love Nosferatu. It's just fantastic. At number eight. Number seven is a uh, Hammer film called uh, Vampire Circus. Uh, this one right here is fantastic. I love this. Um, it's got a pretty interesting premise to it, and, uh, I just like the whole shape-shifting vampires, you know, that are, you know, part of the circus that are start taking over this little small town and stuff. Um, yeah, there's more to the story than that. I don't want to get into the whole thing, but this is a really fantastic film, man. One of the, one of the last, you know, Hammer films, um, you know, from the early 70s, I believe, 1971, so it was right at the end of the Hammer, you know, era. Um... But uh, yeah, these these later Hammer films, a lot of them are really fucking good. And this one's one of the standout ones. I love this flick, man. Definitely check it out if you've never seen it. Uh, Snaps did a great job with this, too. So that was number seven. Uh, and at number six is a uh, uh, modern vampire film called Byzantium. Uh, the first time I watched this film, it actually like, blew my socks off. I loved it so much. Just a great, great modern vampire film telling the story of these two right here. That's pretty much all I'll say about that. Uh, this movie was directed by the same person that did Interview with the Vampire. Uh, so it has actually that type of feel to it. You know, it's it's really well, it, like really beautifully shot. Uh, great acting, um, just really good story. Yeah, everything about this one's fucking fantastic. I I love this. I actually saw this movie after I I had done my top ten last year, and this definitely would have made it. But um, yeah, oh, it even says right on the top from the director of the interview with the vampire. Fuck, I can't read. Uh, yeah, Byzantium. You've never seen this one? Check it out. It's fucking awesome. Love it. And that was number six. In at number five is another modern vampire flick. Uh, let the right one in. Everybody knows about this one. I don't have to go into any detail about this one. But uh, the first time I watched this movie, I was just... Oh, I loved it so much. Everything about this flick was so great. Characters, the story, uh, just the way it was shot. It, it's just... Oh, just a fucking beautiful film. Um, I still to this day have not even watched the remake. I've I've owned the remake pretty much as it came out, and I've never watched it. I can't even bring myself to watch it for some weird reason. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll check it out. I, I've heard that it's good for what it is. Um, but yeah, this this flick is just one of my favorites. I, I absolutely love this one, but everybody knows about it. Number five. Number four is uh, From Dust Till Dawn. Um, yeah, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino... Fuck, man. George Clooney. What an amazing cast this thing. Selma Hayek. Juliette Lewis. Uh, Harvey Keitel, of course. Um, 
it's just uh, fuck. I love the end scene. The, the the whole end of this flick is just so fucking fantastic. Um, everybody knows from Just Till Dawn, but just George Clooney is so fucking badass in this film. I just absolutely love his character. He's so great, but yeah, from Dust Till Dawn, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, number four. Number three, we've got uh, Dracula, from 1931. Uh, Bela Gosi, of course. Um, I love this flick, man. I, I could watch it over and over and over again. Um, I'm such a huge Universal monster freak that, uh, you know, this one, uh, just such a great flick, man. Awesome stuff. But don't really need to go into too much detail about Dracula. Everyone's seen this one, so, yeah, Dracula. Number three. Number two, and I'm probably the only one out of all of us that's going to have this on their list. <laughs> I can't believe how many people hate this movie, but uh, uh, The Lost Boys, um, you know, a lot of people always compare it. They always say this is the 80s version of Twilight. I, I really disagree with that, but uh, I love this flick, man. It's got such an awesome soundtrack. It's just, it's just a fun flick. Um, of course, you can't go wrong with the Corys. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland's badass in this, too, but... It's a flick that I grew up on, man. I, I mean, I, I watch this movie over and over and over again. Uh, it's another vampire film from 1987. 1987 was kind of ridiculous, actually. I think there's... Um, I got, like, three flicks in here from 1987. Um, yeah. Uh, but Lost Boys, don't really need to say too much about that one. Number two, and, of course, my favorite flick of all time is Fright Night from 1985. Um, I love this movie. What can I say? It was uh, the f the movie that actually got me into to horror films. I, I remember watching this with my father when I was a kid, like when I, around the time it came out, and not having any idea, being a naive five or six year old when whenever I seen it, and uh, um, not knowing that it was you know like a horror comedy. But this movie freaked the shit out of me, man. I was just terrified. I I thought my neighbors were coming after me after this one, but. Uh, yeah, in this cover art, man, I, I, I wish, oh man, I wish I had have stolen that standee from the video store back in the day of this. I remember going into the video store and seeing the standee of Fright Night, and fuck, so damn cool. But yeah, everything about this flick's awesome, man. I, Chris Sarandon does such a great job as the vampire. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man, love the soundtrack. I love everything about this movie. Um, yeah, don't watch the remake. <laughs> No, I can't tell you what to do, but I absolutely despise the remake so much. I, I think it's actually one of the worst remakes I've ever seen in my life. I think it's just absolutely an abomination. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. If you like it, that's fine. But uh, Fright Night, number number one. Uh, number two, of course, we'll run these down. Lost Boys. Number three, Dracula from 31. Number four. From Dust Till Dawn, can't go wrong with that. Number five, Let the Right One In, modern. Number six, Byzantium, being another modern film. Number seven, Vampire Circus, Hammer Classic. Number eight, Nosferatu. Number nine, uh, Near Dark, of course from 87. And of course at number 10, is Vamp from also from 1987. I love 80s vampire flicks. Apparently, um, there's so many. There's actually quite a few vampire flicks that I that I really really felt kind of shitty leaving off the list and stuff. There was a couple Gene Roland flicks that I was really like, wow, I can't believe I'm leaving these off right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. And also this one, I'm. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, modern vampire flicks too, Stakeland. I think this movie's fantastic. Uh, it's kind of funny actually because when I first watched this movie when it came out, I didn't actually care for it. Uh, I, I rewatched it and I was like, what the fuck? I, I don't understand what the hell I was thinking because I don't know how I couldn't like this movie. But Stakeland's definitely a, you know, a really good modern one. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for my top 10 list, guys. Uh, top 10 vampires and uh yeah make sure to check out everyone else's videos zach jesse matt and dubby check out all their videos guys peace out